talk to me about how wealthy you can get doing this kind of stuff. Doctors know how to play the system. The, the crooks may know how to recruit the patients that become the fodder for the schemes. But there's a bizarre and appalling twist. There was one particular procedure that gripped my attention. The sweaty palm procedure. It would slide the ice pick right up on the inside of the eye. I present to you the lobotomy. While his scarring appears minor, the procedure is perilous. After an incision in his chest and rib cage, the lung is collapsed and nerve tissue near the spine is severed. All in exchange for his cash reward. It reminded me of the third world countries being involved in organ selling. Here's my own picture of what the surgery did to me, completely screwing up my body's thermoregulation, essentially splitting my autonomic nervous system in half. My life was utterly and completely destroyed by the surgery, skateboarding, and everything I love was taken from me. I'll be talking more later on this video, so please watch the whole thing. Thanks. Man and woman were fed up with heavy sweating, so they had elective surgery to stop it. What they didn't know is that it would spark life-altering side effects. Now, hundreds of people in a support group say they'd rather be dead than alive after the procedure. The holidays used to be Alexander Parker's favorite time of year. Not anymore. It's just a feeling of being dead. Um, it's not even a depression. I don't feel upset that the holidays are here. I just can't get into it. Alexander feels emotionless. She can't get into anything. She explains it began after undergoing surgery called endoscopic thoracic synthetectomy, or ETS, to stop excessive sweating under her arms. The surgery stopped her underarms from sweating, but now she sweats excessively everywhere else. So it was trading one problem for a worse one. Doctors tell her it damaged a nerve in her chest cavity. Is it safe? Yeah, it should be fine. It's like operation. It now causes massive shoulder, elbow, and hand pain. Chris Umble can relate. Yeah, let's take a look at your hands now. Let's see how they're doing. Unfortunately, his idea on how to treat them was to jump both feet first into a treatment we now call the lobotomy. He came to Dr. Raul Nath at the Texas Nerve and Paralysis Institute to have his awful symptoms reversed. It's a lot of small side effects and. Uh... No, they just take the toll on you at the time. Chris just wanted to put an end to clammy palms. But after ETS surgery, his entire body started sweating so severely, even on cold days, he had to change his dripping clothes. It also affected his emotions. Well, you don't feel that joy that you used to, or the other way around, you don't feel the sadness. I feel nothing. Not the wind on my face, nor the spray of the sea. He now suffers arm pain, tingling in his head and back, and brain fogginess. Murder, fraud, sabotage, piracy, and other dastardly deeds perpetrated in the name of science. But Dr. Nath has helped at least some of those symptoms. He took a donor nerve out of my ankle, a soul nerve, and uh, bridged the gap on a sympathetic chain. Sympathetic nerves that are typically cut are uh, right here at the upper chest. Sympathetic nerves uh, run up and down the whole the spine. They're responsible for uh, release of adrenaline, a blood vessel uh, opening and closing response to temperature changes. So the basic idea of a lobotomy is that you have different parts of your brain and you want to separate those two parts. Dr. Nath believes when the nerve is cut, it could interfere with adrenaline, which could spark those emotional problems. Dramatic change in their life. Dr. Mahesh Ramchandani has teamed up with Dr. Nath to help reverse the procedure. Side effects that both Chris and Alexandra say they'd do anything to end. While a reversal can slightly help, they can never be completely cured. To find out more about Alexandra's support group and what others have to say about ETS, go to the help tab of our website. I think, unfortunately, uh, what I said about uh, dysautonomia as being mind-body conditions, this could be an example. If the brain is not getting the input from the heart, a situation that should be evoking an emotional feeling, the, the brain may say, well, I don't feel anything. And when you have a like a blunted affect or nothing really uh, affects your affects how you feel one way or the other you can't feel joy or rage or 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 grief or what have you who 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 studies that and what 
What would you do about that? What would you do about that? Well, um, maybe prevent it from happening in the first place. That's what neurologists and moral doctors should be doing and fighting for. The surgery ETS is being sold as a minor, minimally invasive quick fix with minimal, if any, side effects. None, absolutely zero of the horrific effects shown in this video are disclosed by these predatory surgeons preying upon and advertising to people with deep insecurities. Here is a clear example of this. The Center for Hyperhidrosis, one of the number one advertisers on social media for this procedure, attempting to bait a customer or potential victim by outright lying about the side effects of the procedure. Read this. So somebody online on YouTube asks about side effects. The side effect, one singular side effect is what they're claiming, of the procedure is mild compensatory sweating on your lower back and or stomach when you exercise or get hot. It is very manageable and predictable. Please feel free to call our office at blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. So what would you do about that? Maybe acknowledge that risking such horrific and life and soul destroying side effects does not outweigh the comparatively minor things that this surgery is designed to treat. Destruction of the ability to feel emotions in the body and live like a zombie disassociated from life itself with a broken fight or flight response. Can't properly thermoregulate the body and head to disabling levels, see here. Or clammy hands and blushing. This is why I'm choosing to compare all of this to lobotomies. It's as fucked up in its own way. It is a crime. Given the informed choice, what do you think 100% of people would choose? No one in their right mind would get this procedure ever in a million years being shown all of this clear evidence, period. This dude talking is Dr. Greenberg. He actually has studied ETS victims and knows how utterly horrific it can be, but he ultimately does nothing to stop it because who's going to pay him for that? Nobody. Who, who, who studies that? He is mentioned on the Wikipedia page on ETS. He studied ETS victims with his autonomic testing protocol. The Wikipedia page actually gives very accurate information as to how life-destroying ETS can be. Anybody who reads it, most likely, unless they're completely out of their mind, will not be getting the surgery with what it says on there. The sympathetic nerves uh, run up and down the whole the spine. They're responsible for uh, release of adrenaline, a blood vessel, uh, opening and closing response to temperature changes. What would you do about that? He just shrugs his shoulders, just clueless on what do you do about that? Neurologists and psychologists should be able to easily understand how horrific and backwards this procedure is. Surgeons who are not neurologists themselves are selling a form of literal psychosurgery as a minor, easy outpatient cosmetic procedure with zero regulation, with zero neurological oversight, zero long-term adequate follow-up with patients, completely ignoring the lies that they are destroying and acting like it doesn't exist. What do you do about that? Huh, I don't, who studies that? Uh, maybe what you do about it is you stop it because it is a crime. You hold people responsible for their blatant crimes. That's what you do. Yet Freeman never faced consequences equal to his misdeeds. He never faced any legal repercussions or at the very least, legally require actual informed consent being regulated and overseen by moral neurologists and doctors who are not profiting and running their entire business off of selling this procedure like a used car salesman to as many people as possible. Showing these clear examples to a patient of what can happen would stop the procedure entirely. It would scare the living shit out of anyone as it should. If I were showing these clips and given a brief explanation as to how the autonomic sympathetic nervous system actually works and the effects that literally affect everything in the body and mind, I would have not gotten the surgery ever in a million fucking years. Here's a scientific journal that happens to ask the question, is previous sympathicotomy to blame for exertional heat stroke? I myself was a skateboarder who had the procedure at 17 and almost died from low electrolytes and exhaustive like heat stroke while skateboarding. The medical paper acknowledges the surgery causes androsis of the head and upper body or the complete inability to sweat and thermoregulate of the head, which is very, very dangerous for a high level athlete. This was not disclosed to me. How is this allowed to go on? Skateboarding and weightlifting, having a job functioning as a normal human being was taken from me because I was not told any of this. No scientific study needed 
Only common sense to realize how evil this shit is, right? It's pretty evil, right? So here's a clip from Grey's Anatomy essentially advertising ETS surgery for blushing of the face to the viewer. Let's see if proper informed consent actually occurs in this episode. Kelly Roche, 23 years old, in for a scheduled ETS for treatment of erythrophobia and hyperplexia. You ready to go? Are you kidding? I've been ready since the third grade. Did you read the literature again? You understand the possible side effects? Compensatory sweating of the back abdomen, thighs, and legs. Possible gustatory sweating. Horner syndrome occurs in less than 1% of patients. Brachial plexus injury. Pneumothorax and hemothorax are highly unlikely, but possible side effects of the surgery. You did your homework. What about total inability for head to produce sweat and thermoregulate and cool itself down? Or androsis, right? Oh, she's cooling herself down. Well, what happens when you literally cannot produce any sweat from your head? I think she's going to have a problem then. Splitting the body's thermoregulation in half as demonstrated by any thermal picture taken of someone who has been disabled by ETS. Paralysis of the ability to feel depth and ranges of emotion in the region of the body where the nerves were destroyed. Neurosurgeons don't like to think about complications of what they do, especially complications that take time to develop. I cannot feel excitement here. It may seem like I'm projecting excitement, but it's only a mental thing. In my body, it's a paralysis of emotions. It's indescribable. It's horrific. Sorry. Damn it. Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. Mm -hmm. This might be the last time that that ever happens. The inability to form goosebumps on the upper body above where the surgery took place. Paralysis of the micro changes and vasodilation associated with different autonomic states like emotions or how you feel from music, for example. That's taken away. Unimaginable shit. Having an effect from adrenaline and neuronepinephrine that sends signals and communicates with the brain, altering how a patient feels and the emotional response of the brain. Lack of neuronepinephrine can be correlated directly with depression. This surgery literally alters how neuronepinephrine reaches the brain through cutting the sympathetic signals that are being sent to the brain through the sympathetic chain. You're literally inducing a form of physiological depression with this surgery. I can't get mad. I can't be happy. I can't feel anything without the whole world knowing. These surgeons need to be stopped from profiting off of people's misery. Anyways, um, thanks for listening and bye. Guess it was worth the risk. Surgeons don't like to think about complications of what they do, especially complications that take time to develop.